Hello, everyone. This is Venus Brown. I'm going to be bringing you a reaction to Season 3's penultimate episode of The Crown. Season 3, Episode 9, called Imbruglio. So, are things going to be broiling over? I suspect so. I pulled this image for my background, which I think entails that we're probably doing the funeral for the former king. But the description on the show also says that we have family intervening on Charles' deepening relationship. Because they love to improperly intervene on people's relationships and just make everything worse. Which is exactly what I think they did. In the long run, they made everything worse. Just like they did with the Queen's sister. Now let's get on with the show. Imbroglio. Is that how you say it? I remember the singer named Natalie Imbruglia. So I just imagine that it's probably pronounced similar, except Imbroglio instead of Imbruglia. So, whatever. What do I know? I'm not a native-born European. I just have a little bit of European blood in me. That's about it. I do love all the Scandinavian connections I have from my dad's side of the family. It really has enriched my life a lot, but I am definitely not connected with the language or anything like that. And there is the image for my background. Most high, mighty, and illustrious Prince Edward, Albert, Christian, George, Andrew, Patrick, David. Duke of Windsor. The Illustrious. The most high, Edward VIII. Edward VIII, I am, I am. The Edward VIII, I am. Pocket watch and a compass. With an inscription. No excuse for going in the wrong direction. <laughs> compass. To go in the right direction. She's picking me up after this. <laughs> watch out for your family. Mm-hmm. No, they don't. <laughs> They're already plotting. Looked at me in some god awful way, I realized. I had just replaced him. Dun 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 dun. Yep. We're the next in line. And here's the intro to the Crown, Season 3. If you like this content, leave me a like or a follow. If you click that little bell and click subscribe, you can get more notifications for content once it comes out. And there it is, the crown. Okay, I have a hearing aid. I haven't done this yet, so there we go. Got it like underneath the little thing. The dogs are cute. I'm sorry, Prime Minister. They mean no harm. All animals mean harm. Including humans, especially humans. Seem quite reasonable. Mm -hmm. A wage increase in line with factory workers, and public sympathy for them seems to be growing. Well, people are sentimental and easily swayed. Very important. Economic probity, ma'am. But if the strike continues? Defeat and humiliation for the mine workers. We have wrapped up this whole messy affair. I'm not sure there's much to warn to. <laughs> He's rusty. Well, the first woman not rusty, decades, he's an so asshole. Meaning... Really fallen in love. Don't love a girl like him in the shed. How the fuck would he's you know? Bit of fun. That's not the way that uh, fucking love works, you stupid ass moron. I hate it when people try to define what love can't be, as if it's supposed to meet reason and logic. It's just stupid to try to define what it is and isn't, especially what you think it can't be. You can fall in love with anyone. It's a matter of the heart and soul, not a matter of reason and logic. Makes things so confusing. Because I wasn't supposed to fall in love with you. Damn, why? <laughs> That's not the face I'd hope to see opposite me. Mother <laughs> Corey wrote to me only last week. My dad had a sweater <laughs> like that, although his, I think, was I simply asked brown? To stick with uh, either brown or green, probably because he was in the Sorry, army. Colleague. But it definitely looked very similar to that. I did not have one of those when I was in the army. Well, I like her very much indeed. <laughs> the situation is complicated. I'm not the only interested party. The Prince of Wales. And I don't want to lose her ever. <laughs> With your help. Is he going to help? Family. 
As we know, the whole thing with family goes down the drain. And he thought it was just, you know, innocent fun at first, and now he realizes it's not. <sighs> and I'm pretty sure he's also one of the ones that was on the more conservative side. My fault entirely. So is Wild Oats. Posting overseas will bring him to his senses. I'll speak to everyone at the Admiralty. Leave the Shams and the Parker Bowles families to you. With pleasure. She should really not be in charge of anything. She is not, like, in a position of authority over them. Play the They're of the age. Orange. You ever seen it, Pitt, Mr. Heath? Of course. Not on your television. Take him on a it's field trip. Okay. The heat and the darkness digging for coal because when they go to work and break their backs and risk their lives, they're nowhere near God. They're in hell. And they're doing that day in, day out, so that you and everyone else in this country can have heat and electricity and power. Or any other hoodlum come in here and threaten a democratic government with undemocratic strikes. This government... That is not undemocratic, dumbass. Be deviated from it. I don't know where you're Hello. getting that idea. Strikes are one of the most democratic things there are. We have ours. Because it gives the democratic people of their democracy no, the we. ability to use their voice when they see wrongs being done that they want corrected. And it's one of the main ways that they can get the other side to fucking see their views. With power cuts to conserve energy. It will devastate the country. Mm -hmm. there will be interruptions. And the may have ability for his fucking Christmas. capitalist economy to keep but moving. Mr. Heath is confident of victory. Mm. Have electricity to almost all factories, shops, and offices to three days a week. Comfort. We shall have. So you're going to allow no your country to work day. three days out of the week? It is only us. Government is defeated. Then the country is defeated. What an idiot. That is not smart at all. Because he's a stubborn mule. As officer of the watch. Officer of Your the watch. <laughs> Game of Thrones. So when I was in the army, you didn't necessarily know where you were going to go. But sometimes you did have some control over that. They tried to send me to Texas and I really had no desire to go to Texas at all. And I think at the point that I was leaving Korea, I really missed home. So I requested that they changed my duty station from Texas where they were going to send me to Fort Lewis, Washington. And I was able to convince them mm, that you don't always get a say. It certainly wasn't my choice to go to Korea. In fact, when I joined the military, at least in America, they have you sign this kind of like dream sheet of where you'd like to go and you choose three places and none of those places were places that I was ever stationed. If you decide to re-enlist, you're supposed to have certain options for what you would prefer as bonuses. I had been trying to re-enlist under a different MOS to a different duty station with education benefits. I wanted to change duty station to Germany. I wanted to change MOS. I was a 31 Lima, which was um, supposed to be getting phased out because it was not really needed. And I was requesting a uh, college education. When I got to my re-enlistment window, I had had an auto accident, it was severe. So because of that auto accident, trying to separate from the military, my accident actually happened significantly before my enlistment window was supposed to be over. The separation was not going through and they kept making me do things over and over again. I ended up extending a year and a half past my enlistment window. These scars are from that accident. I got through the accident. I recovered to a point where I was not immobile at all. I was able to think and continue doing most things. I was getting frustrated with the situation. 
I wasn't allowed to work with my team anymore. I kept getting put in the front office or the supply room or with the fuel people, like anywhere except for with my team. When they put me in the supply room, I ended up having problems with the NCO that was down there. It just got really bad. To me, I felt like I was okay. To me, I felt like there was no good reason for me not to go back to duty. I was out of shape because of being on profile for so long and because of being injured so bad. But I was gradually trying to get myself back into shape so that I could um, pass all the obligations. It was through no fault of my own that I had been extended past my initial enlistment window. And I had intentionally had my medical board stopped so that I would not be separated from the military. And I had to jump through some hoops. I had to get off my profile completely. I had to get a psychological evaluation. I passed my psych eval. The main thing they found was that I do have some short-term memory loss problems. Computer filing system up there doesn't work so great. It might be a slight little tinge of PTSD or whatever, but not enough to say that I was mentally unfit. And I went back to my unit. I went back to my team, back to doing my job. And like I said, our job wasn't really needed at that point, but it was nice to be able to work with my coworkers and not to be isolated down in the basement where supply was. And having my enlistment window extended, I got to the period where I was supposed to re-enlist. And I go down to talk to my re-enlistment NCO, and he's got news, and the news is not good. They are not going to give me any bonuses because I have extended past my initial re-enlistment window. They will allow me to re-enlist under needs of the Army, which means I get no bonuses, and I'm just there at their will. And I was not having that. To me, it was just not worth it. There were so many things problematic with me being in the job that I was in, not getting the things that I was asking for at all. There were many challenges that I had with the military. To say it's not the most inclusive place. And they treat all the things that you deal with personally, as some kind of a front to them. At least that was my experience. Not to mention sexual assaults, the unwillingness to allow females to really deal with that without treating them like they are the problem. When you are sexually assaulted, they wonder why you don't want to say anything. Because we already see how they've treated every other female that we know who did have the guts to come out and say that they were assaulted. You don't want your reputation to be destroyed like that. Why would you treat your own people that way? Then you want us to report, yet you don't do enough to make sure that your entire reputation isn't going to be freaking destroyed. Your life isn't going to be made to feel worse than it already does after that situation. So horrible. Anyway, I got to get off of that because... Just like a lot of freaking bad memories. I ended up not re-enlisting because, frankly, I still had a head injury. I don't think the doctors realized that it was still quite a problem. That um, With the frontal head injury, it can impact your ability to control your inhibitions. And for me, that became an issue. I had a hard time holding my tongue. And in the military... That's not something you want to have a hard time with. You can get yourself in a lot of trouble with doing that. It got to a point where I felt like I was going to either end up getting chaptered for, you know, flying off the handle because of something bad going on that I didn't agree with, that I had a hard time controlling my tongue and everything, or I was going to end up back in the hospital. Um, It just took me a long time to realize that those problems were still problematic and that they hadn't completely gone away. So, anyway, now you know a little more about me. And I do have some anxiety because of the auto accident. That was also something that really started to show up later on. It took me a long time to get my doctors to understand that what I was describing was not just 
normal fear and anxiety. It was, it was above and beyond and it was contributing to real problems with my ability to get through it was well after I was chaptered out of the military when I was going to college and I had to do those long drives back and forth. Sometimes it was paralyzing. I had to really press the issue with my vocational rehabilitation counselor, the one that was helping me get through school, of what was going on, of how serious it was, and how much it has changed how I am on the inside to a point that I knew this isn't me. This is not how I act or react to things usually there's something wrong and something needs to be done. That's when they finally started to take me seriously. This really is serious. This really does need to be looked at. And I'm glad because I got years of therapy that I really freaking needed that I wasn't getting before then. It does take a while. <laughs> there's not an open and closed door where you could just come in where whenever you want. But true of the civilian world also, when I needed to get my kids that don't go through the VA into therapy, almost everyone you call, they have a window that takes a while. Even when they are accepting new patients, it can take a while to get that initial appointment. So, so don't think that just because we have private health care and insurance and all that, that we can just go in whenever we want when when these things come up no. sometimes it takes months before you get your initial appointment to specialized care like that let's stop talking about this and get back to the show one person he went to to get help was definitely not a safe space and he didn't realize it that's too bad making no exceptions ever my question is did you or anyone else in this family have something to do with this Ding, ding, ding. People who are perfectly happy together and to find a reason to break them up because there is history of that cruelty in this family. Mm -hmm. But I won't stand for it. I won't stand for it. And yet, they Martin force your hand. He's too fragile, too Well, precious, fucking too put some goddamn structure in there so that it's not so fucking fragile. We really love one another. We've learnt that lesson time and time again. Trust me. This is anything but love, Dickie. My ass. You don't know what the fuck you're talking you about. You Good old David Bowie. Clear-headed, unemotional, rational and calm. Oh, as opposed yes. to what? The hysterical and neurotic... Fake rationality behavior. and calmness. That's always the fucking best. <clears throat> Prepared for there to always be three in the marriage? Andrew Parker Bowles. It was a bit of fun. Mummy, it was. <laughs> Parents don't like to hear that their children are growing up and that they have a sexuality, sexual preference, and a sexual life. But it's true. We're not a bunch of freaking sexual automatons. I don't know. I feel like maybe they should have talked to Camilla about these unresolved feelings for... Andrew Parker Bowles. And then if there's something really to it, then talk to freaking so Charles. Know, but come on. Thought it. So what's the next step? Candle, a stove, or a heater. In Ironmongers, it's there are like, how did they think that this was gonna work? And the maintenance of law and order. What a fucking idiotic prime minister. This way it'll be better for everyone. Well, we know that's not true. Didn't friggin' work out for anybody. Camilla and Andrew Parker Bowles didn't work out. Prince Charles and Princess Diana didn't work out. Camilla and Prince Charles end up back together anyway. You friggin' damn near destroy Diana's life. They basically did destroy Diana's life. So yeah, none of that shit worked out. Fucking crown meddling with people's relationships does not seem to work at all. They just screw around with everybody and screw them over. Bunch of fucking idiots. Drops everyday life up and down the country. Indeed threatens lives, threatens law and order. I do begin to wonder whether we really have taken the right course of action. Well, Ma'am, the government is not to blame. 
The National Union of Mine Workers has been given every opportunity you are to, to blame to, to weather any storm. Mm -hmm. And yet, here we are. Stubbornness of the miners and unions has been considerably more violent. Stubbornness of you. You refuse to fucking listen to them. ...to understand the scale of the miners' anger. Indeed, if Seriously. We to understand them listen to them. Strikes don't happen for no reason. They happen for freaking legitimate reasons. Listen to the workers. Broil you, exactly. Fucking broil over to everybody. Making me all kinds of pissy and angry. I do feel slightly for Charles. You should. It might even feel like a betrayal. It is betrayal. But then you'll come to his senses. Bullshit. And it will be forgotten. Nonsense. We found it. A network of brothers. Those are some thick ass tassels. Holy cow. And father, the struggle. A battle. <laughs> but it is a battle worth fighting. I am for it. I'm just for forcing it on the wrong people. All right, everyone. So that was season three, episode nine of The Crown. And I will see you next week for the season three finale, episode 10. See you then. Until next time, I'll see you when I see you. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you want more content, click subscribe. If you click that little bell and click all, then you'll get more content notifications.